Andrew, uh, we've had an interesting association. We've certainly had uh, our share of interesting conversations, interesting fights, interesting everything. But watching your progress through the industry is, shall we say, been quite entertaining. You, True Track was an extraordinary effort at a time that came out of right field, um, surprised a lot of people, and became part of a major change in the industry. Yeah, for sure. Uh, let me ask you this. Summarize your True Track experience a little bit. True Track was, um, was actually fantastic. It, <clears throat> it was an opportunity for me to, to come into an industry that I already knew well because I was an airport brat as a kid, right? Grew up around aviation, loved aviation, never dreamed I would actually get to work in aviation. Um, Jim Yonkin and Chuck Bilby, the two founders of True Track, took me in very, very early. I was the first employee hired. And we um, got to create something really cool there. I got to learn everything that Jim Yonkin knew about autopilots, which is a lot. And if I retained Holy this much smokes. of it, yeah, really. then I did really, really well. We've interviewed him a couple <laughs> times, and I'll tell you what, I'm, he's forgotten more than I've learned. Absolutely, absolutely. The man was, was a pure genius, uh, no doubt about it. So at True Track, we I saw very early on kind of what was possible there. And I had always told Jim and Chuck, we need to certify this autopilot one day. And, and they weren't really interested in that. It wasn't something that spoke to them. They were having too much fun in the experimental world. But of course, I, being me, wanted to see what could be done, what, you know, what could we, how could we challenge things? How could we push the envelope? So I kind of reached out and started doing some research on that many, many years ago. And watching the winds of change as they blow back and forth in the FAA and in the industry and with ASTM and all those sorts of things. So I was able to learn so many things along the way and finally got the True Track Autopilot certified. And then in 2019, Honeywell knocks on the door and says, hey, we'd, we'd like to buy this product line. And here's my bucket of money. <laughs> well, you know, not quite like that, but uh, oh, no. <clears throat> I'm not saying I did poorly. That's for sure. I, I enjoy I know, doing what on. I do. Let me indulge in the fantasy. Here's your bucket of money. <laughs> well, everyone envisions this very large bucket of money. I'm not saying I wasn't paid well for what we did at True Track, that's for sure. Um, it was for a me, big <laughs> bucket of money. For me, it's always about having fun, though, right? I mean, you know, with the shirt and the Nothing the says and the fun hat, right? like a big bucket of money. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. I had to ride that one for all it was worth. <laughs> you are welcome to ride that one. It's just fine. Oh. You know, for me... Of course, the, it's strictly out of jealousy, the, so go for it. <laughs> the cool thing is I get to keep my long hair and my cowboy hat yeah. no matter where Which I go, right? is hysterical when you it's consider branded. the average corporate culture of people in this industry. So go for it, man. But it's, it's what, you know... It's synonymous with what I built at True Track, exactly. right? And people walk up to the booth and they'll say, all right, where's the long-haired kid with the cowboy hat? Because I know he knows about autopilots. And, and that's really what kind of what we built at True Track with me kind of becoming the face of that. So, you know, it was an opportunity to get to explore what other areas I can contribute to. And so getting to, getting to do some of that at Bendix King and, and some other stuff we're doing at Honeywell and some challenges in the last year or so, but uh, we're certainly getting in a more positive direction now, that's for sure. So, as I understand it, even bigger changes coming. There are lots of big changes, that's for sure, that is for sure. I don't know how much you're wanting me to in, in, uh, <laughs> dig into that, but. <laughs> well, you're heading into the unmanned segment. Yes, that's true, I am. Which is about as... It's radical right now as it gets the new experimental and what's fun you know we've had as you know we produce airborne unmanned for yep. AVSI, so we've been knee deep in this for years yeah but the part that's exciting is we've been talking to people throughout the industry about what's coming and why right and the funny part is they don't talk about the technological revolution they right. talk about the social revolution that's right and that once you wrap your mind around that in the context of what's to come that's when things got really interesting. Yes. So you've got a, you got a big horse to ride here. It, it is, and <clears throat> you know what, it's, it's going to be so much fun. I, I love what we do in GA with the Bendix King product line, and you know, Honeywell's trying to really expand and grow into kind of all segments. But UAM UAS is that, that brand new opportunity that, that we want to really get into that early and, and really help define that market. Uh, we've got so many great products we can pull from in different pieces of the company and we can evolve the technology just a little bit and and we feel like we can really make a huge contribution to something that that's going to be really really big well, i'll tell you what um, your corporate 
backbone here has the potential to do amazing things and has most recently made some real interesting decisions on what projects it's going to undertake and who it partners with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'm really curious to see where it goes. And I realize there's so much of this you can talk talk about and so much you can't. <laughs> For but sure. uh, it is, I mean, you know, the old line, what's 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 the good of something so new? Um, you know, what's 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 the good of a newborn baby? It's literally and in this case, the sky's the limit. It's unlimited potential. That is that is exactly right. It's unlimited potential. What technologies intrigue you the most right now going into UAM? So being an autopilot nerd and for many, mm -hmm. many years, um, <clears throat> obviously the fly-by-wire technology, the abilities there, but then you roll that into detect and avoid, an area where we're going to need huge progression. So take some of our radar technologies and roll that into uh, a fully autonomous vehicle where the vehicle is intelligent enough to, to dodge birds and, <clears throat> and weather and then evaluate the terrain as it's coming into land and things like that. So you know that's amazing technology that's actually really only this much of a step from what we're doing right now today. Mm -hmm. So we talk about it being a technological revolution, but it's really, it's, it's small steps. We're doing a lot of these things already, but we're doing them in boxes this size. Yeah. And now we're talking about doing them in boxes that are this size. And that's what really makes, to me at least, what, what makes all of this really possible is that we can miniaturize Focusing. all of these things we can focus and we can take all that knowledge that we learned over the last 50, 75, 100 years in aviation and roll it into, you know, it's a helicopter in general cases. It's a helicopter, it just has multiple rotors, it's electric. Maybe it's got a turbo generator running it in the near term where we don't have quite enough battery technology to get there. There's so many options to make those incremental steps along the way. Um, I can talk about it for a very long time. You can get into SVO mm -hmm. as the, another interim step before we go full autonomous, stuff like that. So some really, really great opportunities from avionics to fly-by-wire to, there's a side of the company that I haven't been involved with at all with our micro VCS and our cooling systems and all that sort of good stuff. So you gotta have gotta Well, this have is the interesting, cooling. the area you're heading into basically is going to have to require you to be a master of all. That's right, that's right. So I get to learn a bunch of new stuff, which is really, really exciting to me. How has your history heretofore prepared you for this? You know, I've always been um, excited to learn new stuff, and, and I've always liked to push the envelope. Uh, when, when people told me that you couldn't certify the autopilot this way, mm -hmm. my, my response was always, why not? Yeah. It, it wasn't. I'd oh, have been okay. a little ruder, just going. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, uh, you know. You had, your, uh, <laughs> you, had your, you had your moments right here, so yeah. There we go. <laughs> I can do those things. I just try not to. Um, but it's all of that knowledge that I learned over the last twenty years in running my own small business, and the risk that we have to take as small business owners and things like that, which you are all too aware of as well. It, it prepares us for, for what we're really getting into in this new domain. Yes, we're Honeywell, we're a huge organization, but the UAM team is... With serious is, horsepower. Is a, but it's a small organization where we can pull those resources and hopefully still move very quickly and be agile as, as necessary to, to find those strategic partnerships that, that really benefit us to not just secure wins, but to grow the industry. There are a number of shoes everybody's waiting to drop when Boeing gets really serious, mm -hmm. when Elon jumps in. Yep, yep, for sure. I know that's coming, we've had that, a chat. That'd be exciting. Uh, as well as what's the next step for Airbus, what's the yep. next step for Google, mm -hmm. uh, especially after missteps. Right. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Where do you see Honeywell in all this? We play this game that we call pick the winners and we try to keep our eyes really closely on yeah. the industry, right? And there's, there's certainly some, some clear leaders right now today. Mm -hmm. um, there's some um, stragglers. There's everywhere in between. And you know, it, it, sometimes it just takes a small cash infusion or another strategic partnership to move somebody from a straggler to a leader really quickly. Mm -hmm. You've got some early upstarts that are still going really strong. And you know, we're, we're trying, to, trying to work with everybody we possibly can. Uh, total honesty. That's been, for me, one of the really neat things is hopping in and 
feel like I'm entering a new industry and then realizing that I know all the same same people. Mm -hmm. And it's all the same people that I've worked with on certification projects in the past or or light sport aircraft in the past. And, and so you've already already got those relationships in place and it, and it makes that, that opportunity to and work you need, together. You need to easier. do that as early as possible because yep. about the time the light at the end of the tunnel stops looking like a train, <laughs> Uh, and when people start seeing how this thing's all going to coalesce is when the paranoia sets in and you find out where your relationships are good and where That's they're right. not. Well, and, and you've also got the risk if you're in that waiting game too long of the industry passing you by. Oh, right now in particular. I mean, yep. this is light speed. It yep. really is. Yep, and it really is. Where's Harrison Ford when you need him? Uh, I mean, this stuff is just zooming past and... Yep. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. Um, <coughs> This next AUVSI Exponential, mm -hmm. the one in uh, Atlanta, is likely to be where yeah. we start seeing how it's going to so. filter out. I think so. I think there's going to be some some very clear leaders. I know there there have been clear leaders in the past, and you spoke about missteps, but for for a Google, a misstep is an opportunity. Oh no, no, they do. They, they right. So they're brilliant. I mean, they they treat every failure as what it is. Yep. Okay, right. that didn't work, and we know that now, and nobody else does. <laughs> right, that's right. It's brilliant. That's right. Nothing wrong with that at all. Um, the conversations, for instance, I've had with Elon Musk, he's not afraid of a failure. A failure is a step to success, and let's face it, it certainly seems to be working. That's right. That's absolutely Holy right. Holy smokes! So that's right. So we're we're hoping to get some of those early failures out of the way with our strategic partners, and help us develop a, a core product line that that can really help launch and, and and develop this market. How pivotal will be the military in this? I mean, I've worked, I've, we've had some uh, exposure to the AFWERKS program mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things that are coming out of there. And they seem to be targeting and focusing in some unusual but inspired ways. Right. Uh, they're not the only ones. NAVAIR is sure. working on some yep, great stuff right. and so forth. But uh, it seems to me that the military, which tends to grab what it sees outside of its own interest, mm -hmm. is now pretty much uh, dictating what they want right. and leading from ex from that example. Uh, you see that continuing? Well, you know, the military is a, a kind of an interesting interesting piece of this because a lot of the technologies we use today they've been using for <laughs> quite a long time, right? But again, that miniaturization aspect of it. So. I do expect to see continued military presence there significantly, kind of helping push that envelope, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, and, and I think that's a, a big benefit to the industry, for sure. Fascinating. I'll tell you what, I, I like where you've landed. Thank you. Thank you. Me uh, too. Good landing, by the way. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> you know, Very excited. Three green, you know, all the wheel down and stop. <laughs> that's right. Um, and I've been asking everybody here how this last year has affected them in particular. Uh, what they did to survive, what their compatriots did, how their companies did it, and then finally, after all that, how does it change who and what you are for the future? Well, that's a, uh, a very interesting question, actually. And you've got um, one minute. Obviously, no. <laughs> it's been one minute. Well, no, I'm got hosed. You. You've um, got more time than that. Obviously, it's been brutal, right? It's been a brutal year for everyone. There's no doubt about it. Oh, it's awful. Um, for me personally uh, and for Honeywell, uh, there have been certainly struggles. There have been some really big successes as well. The ability to to get together with our teammates. We actually on my on my sales team at Bendix King, we started a virtual happy hour. That even though now we're all traveling and whatnot again, we continue doing it because it's a great opportunity for us to connect. And, no and so idea. much fun for us to just sit down and kind of blow off the steam of the week because everyone's stressed, right? So we did that, a lot of that, several teams that I know um, around the industry and, and Honeywell in particular did that same thing very regularly. Um, yes, it's, it's stressful. Yes, we've lost colleagues. Um, lives have been lost, all, all sorts of very, very terrible things. But look at this, look at this place here today. There's you know, 1,300 plus registrations and nearly every company that we're used to seeing is back here represented today. From adversity, today. perseverance, and survival. That's right. Everybody's here and everybody's really excited. There's a lot of excitement and the, the opportunities are still there. I talked to a couple of companies that had some of their biggest years ever in yeah. 2020. Now there were some companies that were very far down. 
So there were definitely people that won really big in 2020, and there were people that, that lost really big in 2020. So out of that, like you said, that, that it seems like in aviation, we always rise to the challenge. And I know that's probably not just our industry, no. but it's the one I know. So everyone but seems I, to I just- I think aviation does exceptionally well in that regard. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and it's, it's so exciting to, to see and to be a part of. Well, we're so. an aviation uh, it, we're an aviation industry that's been taught from the very beginning to be prepared for the emergency. That's right. The problem is this was the emergency nobody really expected or trained for. Right. But right. at the same time, the attitude is you get through it, get on with it, learn right. from it, adjust, modify, and survive. That's right. Adjust, modify, and survive. And, and it seems like nearly every company, that at least that I have relationships and friendships in, was able to do that. And now that things are starting to come back out of that, um, it's it's so exciting to be to be back, right? I know we're not back back, but but we're back. This is a really sure. good first step. It it's really a good is. Start. And Oshkosh looks like it's gonna be a barn burner. Agreed. AUVSI Expo looks good. MBAA is bragging about running out of booth space. Yes. Uh, if this is recovery, I'll take it. Yep, for sure. For sure. Yeah, MBAA is gonna be fun. Looking for some fun stuff out of the UAM team to be displayed there for sure. Well, we are going to be right there looking at it, shooting, sticking our cameras in your faces, Come being by. as obnoxious as possible. <laughs> it's our job. It's what I love about you. Yeah, well, you know, there, there's at least something. <laughs> Andrew, I got to tell you, I, I, I always enjoy chatting with you because it's never the same old thing. That's, that's I mean, true. That's Got to like that. And more <laughs> important, it's been fun watching you survive in an industry that tends to take people like you eat them up, spit them out, and forget about you. And you didn't get forgotten. You know, I I just can't let that happen, right? No. It, it's it's not the kind of person I well, am. You, you know, you I know still, the people we talk about, the right. folks that have been oh, through this, sure. you survived, and that's great. For sure. You know, I, and the, the True Track customers are still extremely important to me. I still talk to many of them every single day and still try to help with support of that product and, and all that sort of stuff because because they matter to me. They're friendships. They're I mean, they helped me build True Track. It wasn't me, they helped me. Good deal. Andrew, thanks so much for your time. We thanks. sure appreciate, appreciate it. it. Aero News Network's coverage of the 64th Annual AEA International Convention and Trade Show, live from Dallas, Texas, is brought to you in part by the following sponsors. Pilot Communications USA is proud to introduce our latest headsets, the Carbon A1 Active Noise Reduction and the Carbon P1 Passive Headset. Carbon fiber makes our headsets 30% lighter than others, which significantly reduces pilot fatigue. Our Blue Link hand control unit allows you to connect two devices at the same time, and the record out capability can send audio to an onboard camera or digital recorder. Get the headset that's so light you may forget you're wearing one at pilot-usa.com.